The Coalition to End Childhood Lead Poisoning leveraged philanthropic investment to establish one of the nation's first Healthy Homes programs. This work is now helping to lead the call for the establishment of a national green and healthy home standard. In 1986, a group of parents came together to take action to address the skyrocketing lead poisoning rates in their children. They formed Parents Against Lead. One of the great actions that the parents took is they dressed their kids up as canaries and protested down at City Hall that they no longer wanted their children to be canaries in a coal mine. They no longer wanted kids to be lead detectors they realized that they needed to formalize the organization uh, and to expand its base and to encompass all of the stakeholders. In 1993, the group became the Coalition to End Childhood Lead Poisoning, a nonprofit group advocating for families, providing hazard intervention services, legal, relocation, and education services, and policy work. Today, the number of children in Maryland diagnosed each year with lead poisoning or elevated blood lead levels has dropped by more than 95 percent. The coalition developed and helped to obtain the successful passage of historic legislation that helped to establish a national movement to create healthy housing standards so that every child has the opportunity to grow up and thrive in a safe and healthy home. What we did was to really understand, as we started making tremendous headway on lead, was that we were leaving houses lead safe, but children were still sick. They were still getting injured. They still had asthma. There were things in the home that continued to make kids sick. And a lot of this came from our workers who went into homes and saw this firsthand, who came back and reported time after time that while we were making homes safe for lead, we were still leaving behind these sick kids and needed to do more. And so we slowly started to build toward that. And with the Casey Foundation in 1999, began what was the country's first uh, fully funded Healthy Homes program. Looking at our vision statement, of breaking the link between unhealthy housing and unhealthy children. We began to realize that that meant not only were, did we need to make homes lead safe and not only do we need to reduce allergens and safety hazards, but we needed to look at what was going on in terms of the investment in housing in low-income communities. And the major initiative that has uh, come about in the last couple of years has been the initiative to green up America and green up housing in communities um, that really being green was not an affordable option. And so as we began to look at what was going to happen with the stimulus dollars in terms of investment in weatherization and energy retrofitting, this really provided an enormous, an enormous opportunity for us and it continues to provide an enormous opportunity. That opportunity became the Coalition's Green and Healthy Homes Initiative. Now, when the Coalition goes into a home to test flaking paint for lead levels, they look at the house holistically. If needed, they will replace smoke detectors and add carbon monoxide detectors. If the roof needs replacing, they may replace it with a cool roof so the home is cool in the summer, saving the client on utility costs. They seal cracks and holes to reduce access for pests into the home from the outside and use a HEPA vacuum for allergens inside. They will replace old thermostats with energy-efficient ones and install ENERGY STAR windows. 
They provide quality air filtering units, mattress pads, and pillow covers, as well as remove mold from bathrooms. Whatever the client needs to make their home a safe, green, and healthy one, it is provided free of charge. Dorothy O'Bannon's two-year-old has severe asthma. She contacted the Coalition for Assistance, and the Safe at Home program was able to provide her with a quality air unit, a HEPA vacuum cleaner, and covers for her mattresses and pillows to deal with dust mites, which are a trigger for asthma. They also assessed her home for lead. My two-year-old going back and forth to the hospital from 06, from the time she was born, um, through 07 to to 09, she was in and out of the hospital 13 times. I'm on a fixed income, I'm low income, so it's helped me in that way because I don't have the resources like that. And if it wasn't for the coalition, I would still be in a molded house. They came and helped me out with my bathroom in terms of the mold that was in my bathroom, my floors, my windows, uh, you know, the linen on the bed and things like that, the air machine. A uh, rodent problem. If it wasn't for the coalition, I would still be living in that environment. Who knows? My daughter might not be here. Denzel and Tiambe Mitchell's four year old son was diagnosed with asthma when he was four, something that neither of their two older children had experienced. We found out he had asthma because he had an attack late February, early March, and uh, just elevated heart rate breathing, wheeze, a lot of heavy wheezing um, that lasted about a day and a half and went to the physician on the second day and he said yes, asthma as well as other allergies. The Mitchells were introduced to the coalition and were told about the number of things that can trigger their son's asthma. Right here. And we can't see dust mites unless we had a microscope, but they live in everybody's house. They live in my house. They live in their home was assessed for pests and other indoor allergens, and also checked for lead levels. While the work is just beginning, the house will receive a green and healthy housing intervention, leveraging the HUD-funded Safe at Home program. The work that the coalition is doing is awesome. Um, and adding the components of, of dealing with asthma triggers and weatherizing people's homes and uh, making the homes more energy efficient, you know, are extremely important. I agree. I think, I mean, one, because they're helping people become more healthy, which is going to allow their lifestyles to be greater. I mean, they'll, they'll be able to enjoy life more. So that's always a, a plus. Quality of, life. Quality of life will definitely improve. Yeah. They provide an invaluable service for our families who um, truly are underserved in, in multiple different ways. And to have an in-home visit for which pediatricians no longer in our practice models can do is a wonderful service. Um, to have that education in the home directly with the families and directly seeing where the problems are is invaluable in treating a chronic disease such as asthma. In the process of making homes greener and healthier, the coalition is also creating jobs in this highly skilled field for the people who live in the communities they serve. I turned out doing work in homes that I used to live in or even had friends that used to live in. So I kind of got interested in it, just doing work in other people's homes, helping kids out and just enjoy, just love what I'm doing and just led to um, learn even more as far as graduating to the Safe at Home program and just making homes more healthier and safer than just lead. The Coalition to End Childhood Lead Poisoning has become a leader on a national level in the green and healthy home movement. They attribute much of that success to the partnerships and collaborations they have been able to form. We give them funds to continue to do what they do best, which is help improve the life chances of kids and families by reducing elevated blood levels and uh, decreasing the incidences of asthma in the homes and really helping to improve um, the health of the homes and the families that we care about. One of the things we've learned in Baltimore and, and what makes this an opportune time for us to all be involved in the Green and Healthy Homes Initiative is the importance of having all the different players at the table. So the Coalition to End Childhood Lead Poisoning have years of experience working with families. The 
city government has been collaborating with the lead coalition and now with the new weatherization program there's increasing increasing collaboration across city agencies. We're partnering with the coalition to really look at weatherization issues and how those um, issues impact the environment of a home and the coalition is working with us to actually provide direct services to family members who need weatherization assistance. So to be able to work with various entities such that as a house is fixed up, it is both more efficient, using less energy and saving the homeowner money and making the world safer by virtue of being greener, even as the people who live in that house are living a healthier life, this is a double win. So our job as a community foundation is to help donors realize their philanthropic dreams. Parents continue to play a role as partners with the coalition as they did from the beginning. Dorothy O'Bannon is a passionate advocate in the fight for healthy homes. She and her family participated in the Surgeon General's call to action to promote healthy homes. My cousin Cameron, um, he's 18 now, but he still, he still suffers. <laughs> Lead. Is a serious thing. <laughs> Another partner in the Green and Healthy Homes Initiative is the East Baltimore Development Inc., or EBDI, which was formed by Johns Hopkins and the City of Baltimore with support from the Annie E. Casey Foundation to redevelop the 100 acre neighborhood immediately adjacent to the Johns Hopkins University Medical Campus. They worked with us to pioneer a set of uh, demolition protocols that have really changed the landscape in East Baltimore and in the, in the city of Baltimore, certainly, um, with respect to demolition that, um, based on an independent third-party monitoring, has shown to eliminate the hazard of uh, airborne lead in demolition. Um, the city of Baltimore has taken that and adopted it as a code requirement within the city. The coalition has led um, um, statewide in advocating for the state to adopt those standards and we hopeful that'll happen in the coming year. This is a model of the homes that EBDI will rehab in collaboration with the coalition and with foundation support. It has Energy Star appliances and windows, energy efficient insulation, tankless hot water heaters and much more. One of the barriers uh, that exist often in programs is that federal funds cannot be matched with other federal funds. So we've recommended, and the federal government is, is I think, looking at and acting upon, how do we remove those barriers of leveraging programs? In other words, leveraging money from the Office of Healthy Homes at HUD and monies from DOE, Department of Energy, on weatherization so that when you weatherize, you also make a house healthy. 40% of all asthma cases are triggered by the home environment. If we just eliminated that, we would save $5 billion a year. Every child that is poisoned by lead cost us $732,000. And that's from the federal government six or eight years ago, right? So it may cost us more today. So if we put in a $250 window, Energy Star, energy efficient window, and we do that in a lead safe manner, and we reduce moisture, and we reduce lead, and we improve energy efficiency, and if we expend that money in houses and fix a house, that'll cost us maybe somewhere between five to $10,000, we know that the healthcare cost savings will be significant. I do think that other professionals in other states and other pediatricians can look at what the coalition's done and what Baltimore City has done um, to bolster their confidence that they can do uh, these types of interventions in their city and within their practices. Success would mean that there are um, healthier families, greener homes and communities, better quality jobs, green jobs around construction, weatherization, energy auditing, as well as a better educated workforce that knows how to go in and do um, comprehensive uh, home, healthy homes assessments, and they also develop a pathways of opportunity around this work long term. We also know that we will improve school outcomes. We know that we will lower juvenile crime and delinquency, which is linked to lead poisoning. And we know, most of all, 
that our workforce will be better prepared 10 and 15 years from now because they will earn more, because they will have learned more, and they will be better in terms of how they're able to comport themselves in society. And for all of the other ills that we cannot prevent, what we can prevent is what comes from the home and impacts a child.